Let's go over all the shapes we have learned about. We have learned about. So, Kenneth, give me a shape we have learned about. Just name one of them. Square. Kenneth, how do you find the area of a square? Okay, so I give you a sign, Kenneth. Five. How do you find the area of that square? Okay, so this sign is five, two, because it's a square. Area? You don't remember that's the area? Okay, I thought maybe it would help you. Raise your hand. Area of the square. Five times five. What is that? What's the formula? S squared. S squared or Nasia, that was perfect. Base times height. Those are the same thing. Five squared is 25. What's five times five? 25. Okay, those are the same thing. Awesome. Shelby, give me another shape we've learned about. Rectangle. Rectangle. Shelby, how do you find the area of a rectangle? Base times height. What's another way we've put it? Anybody? Another way we've put it? Length times width or width times length. Awesome. All right, Paige, give me another shape we've already learned how to find the area of. Yep, we got rectangle. We already listed that one. What about the warm up? What was the warm up? What shape was the warm up? Start with a P. <laughs> parallelogram, yep. We've learned how to find the area of a parallelogram. What was the area? We just did it in the warm up. What was the area? Base times height. Wow! Do you all notice that all three of those had the same area? Square, base times height. Rectangle, base times height. Parallelogram, base times height. How could it get any easier? How? All right, the last one we've learned about. Kaylee, do you remember the last one? It's like half of a parallelogram. That's today. Start of the T. Start of the T, but we're not learning about today. We learned about last week. That's three sides. All right. Triangle. And do you remember how to find the area of a triangle? Okay. A lot of people didn't do this on their quiz. A lot of people forgot to do the very last step. Base times height divided by two. A lot of you, if you got something wrong on your quiz, it was because you didn't divide by two. Is that what you're talking about, Julius? You're talking about how you didn't divide by two? Yeah, I saw it. Okay. So anyways, those are the formulas you have learned. We're going to add more of them to our list today, but those are the ones you should have already known. Here's just an extra warm up real quick. It's just multiple choice. I thought it was a good problem, so I wanted you to see it. And then we'll put our warm up sheets away and we'll do today's lesson. All right, read it. Then it is red. What's a counterexample to that statement? I'm asking a What's a counterexample? If it's a fruit, then it's red. A banana. Is a banana a fruit? Check. Is a banana red? No. You want to make the hypothesis true and the conclusion false. You want to prove the sentence wrong. So it says the number of the area. You have to learn to take a sentence, Julius, with a lot of words and just find the words that are important. Because that sentence has too many words. That's confusing. So it's really just saying the area is greater than the perimeter. That sentence is saying in a square, the area is bigger than the perimeter. The area is bigger than the perimeter. I want you to find a side length that would prove that wrong. So let's try the first one, six. What's the area? If the side is six. Catherine, what's the area? I give you a square and the side is six. What's the area? 
36. Awesome. Ashley is not here. Austin's not here. Dimitri, what's the perimeter? If the side is six, how many sides are there of a square, Dimitri? Wake up, head up. Come on. How many sides? Four. four. What's six times four? Twenty-four. All right, well, we can't pick this one because for this one it's true. 36 is bigger than 24. For which one of those is it false? Who knows the answer? Kendall, what'd you get? What? D, let's try it out. What's two squared? Two times two? Four. Four. That's the area. The area is four. How many sides are there of a square? Four. There's four, so two plus two plus two plus two. Eight. Eight. The perimeter is bigger than the area, bigger. So D is the correct answer. D is called a counter example. All right, you can gather your warm-ups and get your notes out. Area and perimeter of trapezoids, rhombi kites. Oh, just gather them. When you have them all together, you can give them three. Trapezoid, rhombi kites. Who already knows the formula to how to find the area of a trapezoid? It's a little bit lengthy. It's a little bit more in depth than based on sight. It's not just based on sight. But let's find out what it is. So trapezoid. It's almost like the formula for a triangle. Because I want you to think of a trapezoid as like a triangle just with the top cut off. Does that make sense? A trapezoid is kind of like a triangle with the top cut off. Anyways, so a trapezoid is base times height divided by two. It's base times height divided by two. Let's move one over, okay? Except, go ahead, I'll wait on you. It's like the fourth time I've had to stop talking. So, so instead of base on height divided by two, you have to add the bases together. So can you please write the formula under the picture I gave you? Write the formula under the picture I gave you. I gave you a picture. You write the formula um, at the front of the room. Go get it, John. Base one plus base two times the height divided by two. It's really just saying base times height divided by two, except there's two bases. That's weird. That's different. It's different than a triangle. How come we could not use that formula for a triangle? It doesn't have two bases. Perfect. What is base two? It would be zero. The other base would be zero. Can I just dark here? No, it doesn't get any lighter. All right. I can get darker. No, I don't want it to get darker. <laughs> Try problem number one. Go. I might call on you. Just have an answer ready. Don't be embarrassed because you don't have the answer. The area is actually going to be easier to find than the perimeter is. Add the bases, add the bases, multiply by the height, and divide by two. Can you get out of your seat and go reach back? <laughs> Lewis M, what did you get for the area? We're doing the area first because that one's easier. 160. Keep going. No, no, no. Keep going with the area. Units. Units. Meter squared. I did take off on your quiz if you didn't put units. Okay, I heard someone make a sound like they didn't understand why it was 160. Okay. 14 plus 26 is what? It's 40. So you're really just saying, hey, 40 times 8 divided by 2. Base times height divided by 2. 40 times 8 divided by 2. What's wrong? I got 180. Okay, we'll try again. It's 160. I got 160. 
Huh? Yeah. I, oh, you you can't, mode, can't argue with it. There's no, it has nothing to do with the mode. What's going on, guys? 40 times 8 divided by 2. There's no other way to do it. Okay, okay, go get another one. I'll fix that. Did you, did you try again? Okay, okay. Now we need to find the perimeter. We can't find the perimeter yet because we don't know the missing sides. Oh, man. How are we going to find those? M. M? What? You do a thing with the thing, and then you get the sides outside. What? Well, we're definitely going to do Pythagorean theorem. Definitely. But we don't know all the pieces to Pythagorean theorem yet. 26 minus 14. What's that? 12. 12 divided by 2. There we go. And that's a triple, guys. Have you memorized that triple? 6, 8, 10. If you didn't know, if you didn't know the triple, what would you do? Right now, if you didn't know that, you'd be doing 6 squared plus 8 squared. What is it? Yep, it's 100. Square root of 100. Stilted. All right, so, Megan, when you're ready with the perimeter. Sixty meters. Sixty meters squared? No, a perimeter is 1D. Very good. A perimeter is one-dimensional. Next problem. Find the area of the trapezoid. Add your bases. That's what you should do first. Add your bases. <coughs> The bottom base is 9 plus 18. It's not just 18. The whole base. <laughs> Asia, what's the height of that trapezoid? Nope, 15 is slanted, so that's the side, but that's not the height. Kendall, what's the height of the trapezoid? 12. Where'd you get 12? Pythagorean theorem. 15 squared minus, not plus, guys. 15 squared minus 9 squared. It's 144. Square root of 144. Okay. Julie, you got an area for me? All right, 258 times 12. Yes, it is a triple, yes. Yeah, that's exactly what I got as well. 258 what? Feet squared, very good. You can say squared feet or feet squared. Oh, okay. Questions? Moving on. Last trapezoid problem before we get to go on to rhombus. Last trapezoid problem, same formula. Add your bases. Well, maybe find your bases first. It is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Good observation, Torin. Yeah. Since you found that observation, let's have you finish off the sides. Do you need a formula chart? Yeah, I actually do. Let me write what's on the formula chart on the board. Since I didn't hand them out to you today. So 30, 60, 90. Here's what you would see on your formula chart. Okay. So we need to find the missing two. sides. Two. Where does 2 go? Across from 30. Right here. It goes right here. That's where the 2 goes. So what's the height, Tori? Oh, no, don't put in your calculator. We'll just keep it regular. Yep. Hey guys, are you okay with that? Because you need to be able to do that. Two, two root three, four. It's like a pattern. Two, two root three, four. You need to be able to find those missing things without one of your classmates doing it for you. You have to do it yourself. Two goes here, across from 30. Two. And then right here is two root three. Do we have all the pieces we need? 
Brett, what kind of trapezoid is this? Is it a regular one or an isosceles one? Oh, very nice. So if it's isosceles, tell me what else I can put on my picture. Well, okay. Well, I already got four and four, but yeah. What's this, Brett, right here? It's also two. The only reason it's also two is because it's isosceles. If this wasn't isosceles, we'd be in trouble. Yeah, Brett, how far is it from here to here? This toward. Oh, the whole thing is 10. I'll take it. Okay. The whole thing is 10. I was going to say that was 6. Yep. Very good. Now we're ready. We're ready for our formula. Base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. Do you all know, I mean, from algebra, do you know what happens to those twos? They totally do cancel. So if you want to get rid of those before you go to your calculator, you can. If you don't feel comfortable with that, that's fine. But really, all you're doing in your calculator is 16 times root 3, right? 16 times root 3. Sometimes it helps if you simplify some stuff before you go to your calculator. That way you don't make a mistake in your calculator. Melanie, what would you get? Yes, 27.7. .7. No units, so we don't have to put units. Yay, we get a freebie. Let's move on. New formula, rhombus. <coughs> what was so special about a rhombus from our last unit? What's a rhombus? All what? All sides are equal. Diagonals are what can I? Perpendicular. I thought I was scared you were going to say congruent because they're not congruent. But yes, they are definitely perpendicular. So when you see a rhombus, you put a box immediately, every time. Put a box. All right, so what is this formula? What do you think I'm trying to say with these letters? Well, I didn't make it up, but right here. What does that mean? Uh, diagonal, one. diagonal one. What's the operation between them? Di times. times. Very good. Do you see a plus sign? Does anyone see a plus sign? No. 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 That's the biggest mistake people make. They try to add the diagonals and divide by two. But that says multiply. So what formula does that, to me, that looks exactly like someone else's formula? The triangle's formula. What's the triangle's formula? Base times height divided by two. Diagonal times diagonal divided by two. Base times height divided by two. It's almost the same formula, except you're grabbing different things. All right, let's try it. Find the area of rhombus P, Q, R, S. Where's your calculator? I'm going to call you next. You are. Diagonal, did you write the formula down? Diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 over 2. Your formula chart is going to have it like this. 1 half. Diagonal one, diagonal two, because for some reason they like to put it as coefficients instead. Kaylee. Yeah. No adding. Oh, oh. No, it goes, it means for it to be the whole thing. Okay. Because look, PR is 10 and QS is 12. So it's the whole diagonal. So we're starting off really easy on you. Let's see, what'd you get? Okay, what's 10 times 12? Put a zero on 12. Put a zero on it. No, no, he doesn't need a calculator. Stop. Put a zero on 12. Okay. 120. That's 10 times 12. That's what it is. Divide that by 2. How many times does 2 go into 12? 6. How many times does 2 go into 0? What are the units? Square feet. Feet squared. Ding, ding, ding. 60 was the answer. Let's move on. That one was easy. Whoa, find the area of that rhombus. Is 37 a diagonal? No. No, so be careful. But the good thing is the diagonals are perpendicular, so we can use someone's theorem. Mm -hmm. Torn, when you find this length, let me know right here. Yep. 37 squared minus 12 squared. 37 squared minus 12 squared. Square root. Is that number 
way too big to even make sense. 35? Yep. All right, another triple. We love when we get whole numbers. That's fun. All right, Matt, how long is one of the diagonals? 24. Glad you didn't say 12. 12 was not the length of the diagonal. That was only half of it. So Matt, what about the other diagonal? 70. Oh, my goodness. Where did 70 come from? 35 times 2. Very good. Jeanette, when you're ready, can you tell me the area, please? Diagonal times diagonal divided by 2, not plus, times. 840, and we don't have units. All right. Oh, mine doesn't. What is it? Feet. Feet. Mine doesn't. Yours does. Cool. Ask me a question about this problem. Perfect? Easy? Oh, okay, okay. I'll take that. Read the next one to yourself. This is called a working backwards problem. You can totally work backwards. The opposite of multiplication is division. You can do this, guys. I see people drawing pictures. Way to go. There's not a picture drawn one. Fifty-four is the area. So instead of the letter A, I'm going to write fifty-four. What else do we know? Twelve is one of those D's. We'll just say it. Okay, so twelve. Instead of one of the D's, I put twelve. So all I did was write my area formula, and I plugged in what they handed me. I haven't done any math yet. Zero math. Let's go ahead and do some math. What is 12 divided by 2? 6. So I'm going to keep my 54. And on this side, instead of 12 divided by 2, I'm going to write 6. There you go. You're almost done. The opposite of multiply is divide. Divide. <coughs> opposite of multiply is divide. 54 divided by 6. Final answer. 9. Nine. Okay, let's pretend that went way over your head and you have no idea how we did that. What does your test always look like every time? Multiple choice. choice. You take the answer choices and you plug it in. Let's say A, okay, just a second, Megan. Let's say A was 7. How would you plug that in? Instead of D, you would put 7. seven. 12 times 7 divided by 2. Oh, that's not 54. So then you try B. Then you try C. Yes, Megan. I did a different one. Okay, what'd you do? Okay? And, and then times two. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. That will work, absolutely. That wasn't a mistake. That was a correct way to get the answer. basically the same way as the other one, two. Did you notice what Tori noticed? What? What? Same exact formula. Kite has the same formula as Rhombus. Nothing different. Same exact formula. They're sharing this formula. Just like um, a parallelogram and a rectangle. They have the same formula. So nothing new. That's great. We didn't learn three formulas today. We only really learned two formulas. And we covered three shapes. So example number seven, find the area and perimeter of the kite. Let's do area first because that one's easier. Go ahead and find the area. Go. Let me check your answer. Diagonal times diagonal value to this one. Diagonal times diagonal divided by two. John, what's the length of the longer diagonal? Uh, 21. Yep. What's the length of the other diagonal? Eight. Not quite. Oh, uh, 16. There you go. Diagonal times diagonal divided by 2. Kids, you know it? Can you plug it in real quick, please? 21 times 16. Yeah, that's it. So 21 times 8. Okay. Yes, 168 is the answer. I don't have units. Do you have units this time, guys? You all really do? That's so funny. Okay. Inches squared. 
Whoa, perimeter. How are you going to do that? I don't know any of the sides. I know zero of the sides. Yep. Shelby, well, tell me one of the sides. Just while she's figuring that out, a reminder, a kite is symmetrical. So when you find one side, you've really found two sides. There's a mirror. Remember the mirror with the kite. Ten, six, eight, ten. Cool. We now know two of our sides. Paige, can you find our last side? Eight squared plus fifteen squared. Square root. Seventeen. Cool. Okay. Mirror image. Seventeen looks in the mirror and sees seventeen. So now the perimeter is a simple addition problem. Kaylee, what'd you get? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds right. That's 34, 44, 54. Awesome. 54 inches. Doing good. We're almost done. Find the area of the kite. Last problem on your page. Woohoo! <laughs> diagonal times diagonal divided by 2. Yes, you will do Pythagorean theorem. Absolutely. Because you don't know this diagonal, right? Here, you don't know it. Do not know that diagonal. I'm doing minus because 15 is the hypotenuse, not the leg. Alea, when you do Pythagorean theorem, what do you get for this little piece right here? Nine. Cool. So, Catherine, what's one of my diagonals? Twenty. What's my other diagonal? Eighteen. Beautiful. Twenty times eighteen divided by two. That's really saying ten times eighteen. That's really saying just take eighteen and put a zero on it. <laughs> a hundred and eighty. And what's our units? Meters. Square. All right. So you showed me that you could do these with my help. Now show me that you can do these without my help. <laughs>